Mood and tone. What's the difference? Two ways in which authors communicate with readers is by the use of mood and tone. Although both techniques can elicit particular emotions central to understanding a story, the terms are easily confused. Mood in literature is firmly rooted in the locale or setting of the story that reveals the subject. The physical atmosphere is built scene by scene to create a sense of time, place, and reality. Is the world depicted familiar to the reader in its contemporary realism, or is it fantastic and reminiscent of a distant past? How does everything look, smell, and feel? And most importantly, what does each scene reveal about the subject at hand? These are some of the questions we can ask to delve deeper into the mood emphasized in each sequence of an unfolding story. Tone, on the other hand, is less sensual play and more the attitude of the characters toward the subject at hand. It is strongly related to the narrator's point of view, delivered most reliably through choice of words, either explicitly or implicitly. Tone certainly contributes to the mood of a story, but it is less about creating emotional resonance within the readers and more about communicating a narrator's thoughts or state of mind. Here's another way of understanding the difference between mood and tone. Mood shows the subject of a story, while tone tells the reader what the characters think of that subject. To illustrate, let's look at two examples from literature from different eras that share similar themes. Dracula by Bram Stoker. That's Dracula, if you didn't catch it. An Interview with a Vampire by Anne Rice. Vampire literature is a genre in which mood and tone are almost as important as plot and story. So the characters in each novel become conduits for communicating a unique, otherworldly atmosphere that can only exist through their perceptions. Dracula is an epistolary novel in which the narration is delivered through a series of journal entries. The mood is set as a scene unfolds with the protagonist Jonathan Harker's travel from London, England, to the Carpathian Mountains in Transylvania. It's Transylvania. During the late 19th century, the mood first affected is one of disorientation, with the physical contrast drawn sharply between Western and Eastern Europe by the reference to the literal bridges over the Danube leading eastward. Later, the contrast is emphasized as we follow the narrator further into this unfamiliar realm by reading about his first meal, paprika hendel, it's chicken, a dish drawn to be distinct, presumably from food familiar to the English palate at that time. As in the opening, the mood continues to be shown with sight and taste, with the senses directed toward an unfamiliar scene and the subject of the novel. To foreshadow the horror to come, the mood is punctuated with the narrator's attitude about that subject. The tone is one of apprehension and fear, as the narrator explicitly tells us about his first night sleeping in a foreign hotel. I did not sleep well. There was a dog howling all night under my window, and I had to drink up all the water, but was still very thirsty, presumably from the strong, unfamiliar seasoning in the food served the night before. In this case, the protagonist's tone matches the mood. However, sometimes tone and mood are at odds with one another. Interview with a vampire begins quite literally with the viewpoint of the protagonist, the vampire himself, who languidly opens the novel with, I see, while preparing himself for an interview with a young journalist. His attitude, or tone, is one of quiet ease. His tone matches the mood, which is set by a rather unexotic backdrop of a cityscape through the window of an ordinary hotel room. The dialogue bounces between vampire and journalist, monster and human, while the mood of prosaic reality is revealed in the simple details of a chair, a table, and a recording device. The tonal horror necessary for the tension to unfold is projected by the very different attitude of the journalist toward the scene. The readers are told that the interviewer shuddered and recoiled with cold sweat running down the side of his face in other words, 
Reason meets emotion in this clash between tone and mood. A sharp contrast is drawn between the attitude of the two protagonists toward the scene and the audience is sucked right in. You know, because vampires, they, they suck blood. They suck blood! <sighs> For the students of literature, such moments of tension are exciting and revelatory. Mood shows the particular scenes that direct us toward the subject of a story, but don't tells us what each character actually thinks of that subject. Both are necessary devices to make a world come alive on the page or on the screen.